Hi, let's take a look at uh, uh, hexa um, directions in hexagonal systems. So first thing uh, we'll do is just talk about a procedure that we're going to follow to go through this. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to pretend that the A1, A2, Z three axis, uh, three axis uh, parallel pipette within the hexagonal unit cell is actually uh, X, Y, Z orthogonal. We're going to sort of imagine that that's where our, um, our direction exists. And then we're going to proceed from there and determine the three index notation for that vector. Now we're going to call this sort of a temporary three index system because um, we're not going to stop there. We could, in fact, not, I mean, a, a while ago, a few decades ago, people used to do that. But the convention nowadays is to go to four axis system to avoid any confusion with, um, with uh, cubic systems. Um, so we'll, we'll take this um, temporary three axis system then and then um, convert it to a four axis system uh, and, and then just enclose it. So it's, it's sort of that straightforward. So let's um, go ahead and look at an example problem now. So this first example problem, uh, we've got a vector that originates off on the uh, right hand side of the, uh, sorry, the left hand side of the, the uh, base of the uh, hexagonal unit cell and then travels up. And so what we have to do, the first step, and this is really I think the hard step, is we have to be able to picture that um, that direction within the A1, A2, Z, three-axis system. And our conventional origin in the middle of the unit cell there, in the middle of the base of the unit cell, is uh, usually a, you know, a, a place that we're comfortable visualizing this. So what we could do is we could actually just translate that vector, translate it over, so that it now originates at our conventional origin, right in the very center of the basal plane. Uh, and if we do that, we'll see the, uh, the direction that the vector um, travels up. Um, in the in the z direction and and directly over the negative uh, y uh, sorry the negative a3 axis and it travels by one step over in the horizontal direction that is the a lattice parameter and then at, during that that distance that travel it travels up a rise of the lattice parameter so if we look at that vector in the um, three axis system now it would be the vector that originates at the conventional origin and then travels uh, travels one over in, in the x, one over in the y, and one up in the z. So it's in fact one of those cube diagonals, and specifically it's the 1, 1, 1 direction in uh, a cubic system. So u prime, v prime, and w prime are 1, 1, and 1. Uh, so then all we need to do is convert that to, um, to the three axis uh, system. <clears throat> and um, actually, another thing we could do, I could just, I could just uh, Instead of shifting the vector over, um, another thing we could have done is we could have just defined the original, uh, the origin of the vector as it as it originally sat as our origin, and then just drawn in um, or imagined our a1, a2 axes originating from that origin. It's exactly, it's entirely equivalent. Either define a new origin or translate the vector over. They're, they're, they're the same thing. Okay, so anyway, we've got u prime, v prime, w prime, one, one, and one. So therefore, u is equal to one third times two times one minus 1. <clears throat> um, uh, v is, again, 1 third times 2 times 1 minus 1. And um, t, the third, this new index, is, remember, it's equal to the sum of u and v made negative. It's not u prime plus um, v prime made negative. So just make sure you don't make a mistake with that. Um, and so, so we'll have that um, u is 1 third. Um, v is, is one-third. Um, t, then, is negative two-thirds. And w is just w prime, which is one. So we're almost done. We've just got the three in the denominator there, a little pesky little three. And so we're going to just uh, multiply across by, uh, by three to clear the fractions. And we're going to end up with, um, with one, one, uh, negative two, and one. So, uh, sorry, and three. And three. One times three is three. Uh, so um, our, our enclosure then in square brackets is going to be one, one, two bar, three. All right, fantastic. Let's look at another, uh, another vector now. Um, and this one is a little bit more, um, a little bit more challenging perhaps. Um, so what we have to do is we have to translate that into our A1, A2, uh, Z, three axis uh, system. 
or define a new origin around there. I think in this case it's easier to translate the vector rather than draw the axes, but you could, you could do either. Either one is, is the same. So if we translate it over, you can realize that, in fact, it resides entirely over the A2 axis. So that means if you translate it back into space, back along the positive A1, uh, sorry, A2 axis, it'll just travel exactly over the A2 axis with no component uh, hanging off into the A1 direction. Um, so when we translate it back by one A lattice parameter in the positive A2 direction, it now originates in the base, um, in, the, in the conventional origin, right in the very middle of the basal plane, and travels out. But you'll notice that it travels two steps before it makes one rise in the Z direction. Therefore, it's going to exit our unit cell at half the height. Okay, so now we've got this vector that's going out straight along the A2 direction with a rise um, for that one, one step in the A2 direction, a rise of one half. Uh, so that vector in, uh, in our three axis notation would be, um, well, it's got no component in, in, Z, in X, uh, it's got one in Y and one half in, in Z. So we've got um, zero, one, and one half. Multiply across by two, we get zero, two, one. So that's the 0, 2, 1 vector. Okay. Um, so then we just have to convert to, um, from u prime, v prime, w prime to uvt, uh, uvtw for an uh, index system. So let's do that. Um, and uh, if we want to convert to u, we've got uh, 1 third times uh, 2 times u prime, which is 0. So uh, minus 1 times 1 third is negative 1 third. And, and then... Um, Sorry, minus two, minus two, so negative two thirds, um, and then we've got uh, v um, being uh, one third times two times two minus zero, so that's uh, four thirds, and then we sum u and v and make it all negative, so we've got uh, four thirds minus two thirds is two thirds uh, made negative, so that's negative two thirds, and then w is just w prime, which is just one, um, so the our, our our indices are almost done. Again, we got to clear across uh, to get rid of the, the, the three in the denominator. And so we're going to end up with two bar, four, two bar, three, once we've multiplied across by three. So that was fairly challenging. Let's look at one more. Um, and this one here, again, we've got to picture this somewhere within, uh, within our A1, A2, Z, three axis uh, system somehow. So we could translate it over or we could just um, define the origin where it, it exists, uh, where the origination of the vector uh, resides right now. And I think that's probably the easiest way to do it. So the start of the vector, let's call that the origin, and we can draw in our A1, A2, Z parallelopiped around that. You, you hopefully you'll be able to see um, how that makes, um, or how, what would that would look like in our X, Y, Z um, orthogonal um, system. So, in fact, it's traveling out uh, in, along the, the positive um, A1 direction. It's got, it rises up a little bit and has a little component into positive, um, into positive Y. But it's going to come out of that front face, essentially, of the XYZ um, cube uh, or system. Okay? Um, and so that's what it, uh, I'm, uh, you, you, first thing you need to picture is that. Uh, it's a little difficult to see well, exactly where it's going to exit the unit cell. Hopefully, if you sketch in your axes um, around the origin of the, the vector, it'll, it'll be a little more clear. Um, but you can see if it actually traverses two steps along the, the A1 direction before it rises up 1 in Z, that means that you're going to have it exiting the, uh, the front face at half the height. Um, okay, so, so that means we've got this vector now that originates at the conventional origin of our cube and travels out sort of towards us, or towards you this way, I suppose, um, and rises up by half of the uh, um, unit cell, half the, the height in the z direction before it exits that front face. So the point coordinates of that point where it, the vector exits the unit cell starting at 0, 0, 0 would be um, 1 in the x, one half in the y and one half in the z. So we've got a vector that you multiply across by two. The vector in three space, or in the three axis system, is um, two, one, one, two, one, one. Um, so then we just have to convert two, one, one into our four axis system. So one third times two times two minus one um, is going to give us uh, 
4 minus 3, that's actually 1. That's actually 1, isn't it? Um, and then V uh, is going to be uh, 1 third times uh, 2 times 1 minus 2. So that's 0. OK, so that's 0. It is 0, in fact. Um, and then uh, T is 1 plus 0 made, uh, made negative, so it's negative 1. And W, of course, is uh, just uh, W prime, which was 1. Um, so our uh, four-axis uh, notation now for that vector is just 1, 0, 1 bar, 1. Okay? But that was, that was hard. It looks like an easy answer, but it was a challenging question. I hope that helped. Thanks.